I don't want to have to say, because who knows when you're going to run into these people, you know? We're hearing a lot these days in the media about something called deep fakes. This is a cutting edge and rather scary new technology that involves creating hyper-realistic videos that are fake, as the name suggests. The word deep fakes comes from deep learning, which is a type of artificial intelligence, and well, fake. The first time we really heard about this is when someone created a super-realistic video of President Obama giving a speech about things he never said. The video looked real, it looked like the president speaking. Since then, the technology has gotten better and better, and we're seeing a lot of other examples of these hyper-realistic videos that look like it's a famous celebrity. There's a law called Section 230 that protects websites from being sued for what their clients upload. Even if it's illegal, you have to go after the user themselves and not the site. And going after the user of who posted a deep fake can be anyone on the internet, can be a random troll. And so this is part of an ongoing tension between free expression and the desire to protect websites versus needing to enforce you know, a baseline of law and decency to protect people from demeaning and uh, you know, aggressive imagery. Experts in the field, a couple of them saying that in the case of deep fakes, you could piggyback on these laws and simply use them to make it a criminal offense to create pornographic deep fakes of someone without their consent. But in terms of taking it down, it could be a long, hard struggle. Foreign policy experts are actually very worried right now, and this is becoming a security threat because it's so easy to manipulate videos. Someone might take Donald Trump's head and put it on Vladimir Putin's body. That's genuine political satire. Whether or not you agree with Donald Trump, that's something that should be protected by the First Amendment. Also, the example of um, Steve Buscemi's face on Jennifer Lawrence's body at the Golden Globes, I don't know what that is. It's funny, it's art, it's criticism, it's something. But it's it's not clear it's illegal. Unfortunately, it's going to be very hard to develop rules that allow that stuff to be displayed while the troublesome, hateful, or pornographic stuff is taken down. Some people might be wondering, what if I discover a deep fake of me on the internet saying something I don't want to say, or even worse, being put in you know, a pornographic situation or something hateful you don't want to be in? Well, what you can do is try to reach out to the website and ask them to take it down. If it's a mainstream site, you can probably hope they'll do it. However, if it's a sort of more unscrupulous site that caters to this sort of material, you might want to consult a cyberbullying site or there's a organizations devoted to fighting revenge porn. They can help you to try fight it and take it down, pair you with a lawyer. But I think it's important to know there are organizations out there that will help you. Even if you can find the original source, the person who put it up, and get them to take it down, uh, perhaps through a lawsuit, by the time you do that, there's a very good chance it'll be copied to a bunch of other sites. And this is the same problem we've seen with pornography and just the viral nature of the internet. Things spread so quickly, it's kind of a whack-a-mole game. The solution in the long run might be using AI to fight AI. The big companies might be able to find the videos, but for now, the technology's new and people are a little wary of smothering something that in many cases can be free expression. The legal response to them just has not been developed.